Barbara. Welcome to Mess to Yes. Today we're going to make something that's really trendy right now. And some people love them, some people object to them. So I'm going to show you how to make a faux rug hide. i got to start that again because it's not a rug hide. Scar. Hi, I'm Barbara. Welcome to Mess to Yes. Today I'm going to show you how to make a faux cow hide. They're very trendy right now. Some people love them. Some people object to having animal hides on their floor. So making a faux one is not only an inexpensive alternative, but it's also an animal friendly option. But in order to do that, we have to look at what a real cow hide looks like in order to emulate it. None of them are the same. So this is not a project that's gonna require a high level of perfectionism. It's one you can do in an afternoon, spread a tarp out on the floor, and then we're going to cut on using a drop cloth because they're less than $20 for one big, unseamed, uninterrupted piece of fabric. And it's a nice, heavy canvas. And in this case, it's backed by a little bit of plastic. So if somebody spills something on it, you just wipe it up. I'm going to be cutting that into the shape of a cowhide. Now, this is a terrible example of a cowhide. It's, it's a cowhide with a limp because he's kind of crooked. But you get the idea. You have to have, now remember, it's a real animal. So you have to think about it that way when you're drawing it. So I hate to say it, but it has these bumps at the top where the neck is. And then the four corners are the legs. It has something in the end where the rump is. It comes in an in indentation, just like its rear end where the tail would be, but we're not putting a tail on it. And then it has fat belly on the side. Now the other thing you have to think about, now I'll put an outline of something like this on the blog. I'm also gonna put some photos of some real cow hides. I went out to Ikea actually and flipped through their whole pile to see some ideas of different ways that hair patterns grew, different colorations, to see which ones I liked. And I'll put some pictures up there and you can pick the one that appeals to you the most. Um, Yesspaces.com to sign up for the blog so you never miss any of the directions or any of these photos, step-by-step -step links to things that you might need. So once you have your outline and you're just gonna lay this on the floor and draw it in pencil, and you don't care if it's perfect, remember? Um, then you have to think about this in quadrants and remember that when this was on the animal this part was touching this part and the legs were wrapped around a leg touching each other so keeping that in mind we're going to be painting on there going in directions from the center with our brush strokes to emulate hair. I'm gonna show you this in a minute. I just want you to get the idea of the directions. Then any white spots or anything that we put on this hide. So if I decide that this is all gonna be brown here, but it's gonna be white on the edges. If this cow is white over here, it's white over here too. Not in the exact same way, maybe. It doesn't have, there's no symmetrical spots on cows, unless you're reading Dr. Seuss, and even he didn't do that, I don't think. Remember that they need to line up like it would really wrap around on a cow. And if you're doing a leg, and you've got some white here, you need some white over here. And then maybe some white spots. So just think about that and think about the direction of the hair. And those are really the secrets to painting. Other than that, let me show you how simple this is. So, we're pretending that I have cut out my cowhide into my shape. I have here a dark brown, a medium brown, and kind of a caramel color. And then I have a white. The way I painted the one that I have finished, that you're going to see in a few minutes, is I started with a lighter base color. Because when I looked at the cows at Ikea, 
they either had a very dark, like almost black undertone with lighter hairs on top, or a lighter undertone with the browns on top. And that's the look I preferred. So I started going in my direction. Can you see that? Now this is what's gonna happen right here. It's gonna be solid, and that may be what you want when you first pick up the brush. As you go, it'll get more feathery. So if you don't want the solid look anywhere, you can use a paper towel and brush it off a little bit and then you'll just get the feathery with some light underneath. But I actually, with this color, am fine with giving a nice solid underlayment and then brushing out the edges to feather into the next color because there's no really sharp lines on any animal hide. I mean, they're not, zebras have stripes, but there's still hairs that overlay each other. Once you have that done, you're gonna let your brush dry. You wouldn't go directly into your dark brown because you're just gonna end up with mud. Let one color completely dry and then come back in with your other one. But for these purposes, I don't want it to be too opaque, so I'm pounding off a little of the extra paint. This is where you could put it on the paper towel or you could pound it off like this. So I'm gonna go over the kind of golden brown and just keep doing that until I get the color I want. See, I want it about like that. So I see just a little bit, just a little bit of that warm undertone under the dark brown. Then what I did, and you'll see, I mean, when you see the finished cowhide, it's primarily dark brown. And the cowhides at Ikea were very dark and very highly saturated with color. So you don't need to be dainty or delicate about this. Then I went back in and I'm gonna show you a spot on the edge. You would just use the same kind of brush to do the white. If you wanna do a spot, you might wanna use a stenciling brush. What defines a stenciling brush is just having a flat, blunt end so that all the paint hits the, the surface at the same time. So I'm just putting in a spot. It's really, that's it. Don't make it too even. Don't go over it and over it again because you'll start picking up the dark brown from underneath and you'll lose the white. That's it. Now, you could just cut it out and leave it like that. The edges will fray a little bit if you do that. What I decided to do is I took some felt and I cut it into a two inch strip and I went all the way around the outside of the edging. So all the way around, everywhere. And I just stitched on the inside of the canvas edge. So it can fray a little bit. I'm okay with that look. I mean, it's clearly not a cowhide. It's a look. You have to be okay with the canvas. You have to be okay with the frayed edges. You have to be okay with your level of how you're gonna paint yours. And when you see mine, it's not perfect, but it's fun. And it's a nice kind of artistic twist and an inexpensive way to add some atmosphere to a boy's room, to a front hall at a ski cottage, whatever you want. We paired it with our industrial bench that we made for you in another video. You can look for that one. And I think it looks great. Take a look. Thank you.